All right, guys, welcome to this one today. You're going to love it. It is going to inspire you and give you the audacity to dag on, hold on to exactly what God has told you he's going to do in your life. He will make a way, he will see you through, and he is going to give you through this word, ah, the courage to believe him, to stand one more day, to stand back up one more time, because your God is for you and not against you. Let me show you what we're talking about in this one. But before we do, let us talk to this king of ours, King Jesus. We thank you for the privilege of coming into relationship with the Father through you, that you died on a cross for us, and that through our faith in you, you have given us new life. We have a resurrected life um, hid by the blood that you have shed, and we can walk differently, talk differently, act differently now, because the old is gone and the new has come. There, let us walk in the new. Let us not go back to our old ways, but walk into the life that you have for us, and to give you glory in every step. Holy Spirit, speak through us today. Let it hit every heart that this word is meant to hit, and let us... Um, let them gain exactly the boldness, the courage, the life from this that they are meant to gain. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, hold on for this one. This one, this one's amazing. Let me show you what we started with. Genesis 1, very first words out the book. Verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Like, let's just stop that right there. You ain't got to go no further, because right there in those scriptures, you have found the most priceless commodity in all the universe, in all of heaven, in all of earth, and all of under the earth. There is not another thing worth more than what we just read. God spoke. And in those words, that is where the priceless um, gem is found, his word. Because when you get a hold of that word, it brings into existence what did not exist. And I need to encourage you today that all you need is God's word in your life, in your heart. And when you do get that word, you hold on to it. I'm talking with everything you got. You don't treat it as cheap, this thing that is priceless. You hold on to it. You trade your gold for it. You trade your silver for it. You go after it like you would be mining for gold. I'm talking this is the most priceless thing in all of creation and it's for us to hold on to. It's for us to have and not just hold on to, to put to use. And I want to show you this today because this, ah, this is what some of y'all been waiting on. This is what changes the game of a life because some of y'all, just like the beginning, there's darkness covering all of it. You don't know which way is up because it's so dark. You don't know um, the left from the right because you can't see one foot in front of you. you covered in darkness. But I want to encourage you, God is hovering right above the darkness. And when he speaks, ah, when he speaks, life and light is coming in that a new day might dawn, that you might rise up and take hold of and hold on to the promises, every promise from him. Let me show you, because this changes lives, changes the game, and will change your game of your life. Let me show you. Isaiah 55. Don't dismiss this. Don't treat it as cheap what God has given to you because this is, this is um, you can't buy this. Money can't buy a word from God, but faith can hold on to it. Faith can wield it. Faith can take it and use it. Let me show you in this. Isaiah 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent, sent it for. It will not return to me empty. It will not return to me void, but will accomplish exactly what I have seen it for. Like, listen to me. I need to tell you a story to show this um, tangible, right? Because this is pretty abstract. We can get a hold of this and be inspired by it, but I want to see you um, something that we can hold on to, something real life experience that we can put this into that it makes complete sense. And I'm going to share something with my life with us um, to get this story out, okay? So I just need you to know that my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but accomplish everything that I have sent it for. 
So here's the story to relate to this. Back before children, <laughs> me and my wife, we love to travel, right? We would put all our extra money towards this because we absolutely love seeing new places. It just, it's a passion of ours, and it kind of gets stifled by children nowadays. But back then, we purposely held off trying for a family just so we could experience life together and go see these different places. And we loved it, right? So one of these trips, we found ourselves on the Mediterranean. And now you're thinking like, ooh, like you must be doing okay for that. Listen to me. Like, don't get it twisted like that. We ain't bucks up in, in what you think we are. A deal came through the internet that took us from our city where we could fly directly out of over to Barcelona, 10 days on the Mediterranean, and back home for less than you can do three days in Vegas for. Like, how are you not going to pass that up? I don't even do debt, and I get in debt for a life experience like that. You know what I'm talking about? Like, so I book this for me and my wife, and we fly over, and we do this, and it's absolutely once-in-a-lifetime experience, God-given, I'm sure of it, because we got to see um, the places in the Bible that we only get to read about, right? We went to Ephesus, and we got to walk on those streets, and we got to see the Colosseum where Paul was going to be stoned at. We got to go to Malta and see where the shipwreck had. Like, we got to see this stuff. We got to go to Turkey. We got to see... The pyramids, like talking about in Scripture. You know what I'm talking about? Like, we got to see real life tangible what the Bible only showed us before in words. And it was beautiful. But the return trip from this beautiful 10 days was anything but. It was like hell getting back home. Now, we get off the boat and we go to the airport in Barcelona. And it's, I'm talking blue skies, butterflies, right? Sun's shining, temperature's perfect, got a little jacket on. We head into the airport. It's perfect cap to this vacation that we just had. Like, we loved it, right? And we go onto the airplane, and they're flying us to Amsterdam before we pop over the pond back to New York, right? That's a little side trip back over. They're taking us to Amsterdam. What we don't know when we leave beautiful Barcelona is that we're flying in to literally um, an airport on lockdown, right? It was a big snowstorm, shut the rails down. You can't go nowhere but the airport. Hotels have all been booked up for hours by now. We walk into this um, area that we're supposed to catch our connections from with one kiosk working, 700 other people just camped there because there is no way out. Like you, minimum three days you're going to be spending there because snow has shut everything down. There's one flight left heading back over to the States and it leaves just a couple hours from then. By like heading back to New York, one flight, and they say it's completely booked. You can't get on this flight, right? And my wife, she just, boom, she loses it. She's just bawling her eyes out. Because we walk into this literally hell on earth, man. People just, they already got their places camped out. They, they tuck it in for a long three days because you can't go nowhere. So I make my way over to this kiosk. And what am I going to do? Just accept it? Nah, you got to at least try, right? So I make my way to this kiosk, and there's a couple flight attendants. Not flight attendants. What are they? Uh, baggage workers, clerks at the counter. Thank God we got one that spoke English. And I'm like, listen, we didn't want to come here. You guys knew the situation when you flew us in. Like, it was beautiful in Barcelona. You knew this was locked down. Like, is there anything you could do for us? Because we don't, this isn't our, and <laughs> we're trying to reason with and here this woman goes, she goes, um, let me have your passports and tickets, please. And I'm like, oh, like, this is a big moment, right? Because there are 700 other people, stuff gets lost in the translation, and I'm about to hand over our only identification that we are here in this country to a woman I've never met before, but I said, what else we got to lose? And I give her my passports and our tickets, and she disappears. And I'm talking like 20, 30, 40 minutes, this woman gone, I don't see, like, anything from her. And I'm just standing at this kiosk because the rest of them are broken. Everyone else trying to get other attendants' um, um, attention. And I'm just, I can't leave now because how's she going to find me? So I'm just standing there. Forty minutes goes by. Here she comes back. She's got both my passports. She's got two new tickets. She says, here you go, sir. Have a great flight. It leaves shortly, so you better run to get there. I'm like, what? I literally, I don't even know that. I'm like, I could hug you right now. Thank you so much. We get our stuff. I said, woman, we got to go. And we start running through the airport. And I hear behind me, right, how'd they get out? How'd they get a ticket? People asking, questioning, right? And this woman gave us, like, I'm talking the hookup. Favor of God, I'm going to say it was. And we running through the airport, throw the, our, our bags on the security, and hustle through, get on the flight. Last flight out that night. 
going into New York. And they, you know, everyone talking in the concourse like it was completely full. Listen to me, it was half full. They just tried to get people out, shut the place down, do it again. Like, there was plenty of seats on there, just FYI, you know. Um, so we fly over. How did we get out? I'm talking, we got the golden ticket. This woman gave us everything in that ticket. It's what secured our ride. And that's what I'm trying to tell you God's word is. Don't you understand when he speaks it? I don't care what hell you're going through. I don't care how dark it is when everyone else is trying to get something. When he shows up and speaks that word to your heart, into your life, everything changes. And people might be wondering, how are you getting up? How are you getting out? Listen to me. It's because we got the ticket. It changes everything. I ain't got to stay where I used to be. I ain't got to be down where I um, was comfortable and and. What I walked into, another level has come. How'd it come? The ticket was given. The word was spoken, and it does not return void. I ain't got to go sit back against the seat and listen to my woman cry no more. We can get up and get out because the word was spoken. And that's what some of us listening to this need tonight. All it is is a word, and it changes everything. It brings into existence when it did not exist. See what I'm talking about? This woman brought to me something priceless. You couldn't buy it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You can't buy when God shows up. You could, they, there wasn't enough money to buy a ticket. They were withholding it from everyone because to show favor ruined. You know what I'm talking about? But this woman freely gave. Why, I have no idea. But she did, and it gets even better. I'll tell you here in a second. But this is how I relate to this scripture right here. It don't return void. He going to get you back stateside. He knows how to get you home. He has the ticket, and it's not just to get you partway. It's to get you all the way. Now, I say this, and we're talking about the promises of God, but we start with Jesus. You know what I'm talking about? Like He is that golden ticket for us. That is what this life, that is how you return home. He is the passage. There is no other, because there is only one name given by which man can be saved, by which you can get out that line, by which you can get out that hell, by which that darkness can be shed by light. It is the name of Jesus. He is the ticket home. Now let me show you, because we got to set precedent, right? John 1. We're talking about the word of God being everything, being priceless, to hold on to it. Don't let it go. Could you imagine if I were to drop that ticket as we run running through the airport? Could you imagine? We'd have been stuck there. But you don't treat as cheap something that priceless. You hold on to it. You clutch it. And you don't, I don't care if a robber comes trying to get it. You hold on to it because your life is held in that. Does that make sense? It's the same thing with God's word. When he speaks it to you, I don't care what doubt comes whispering against you. You hold on to it. You don't let it go. You don't treat as cheap something that priceless. When God speaks a word to you, you cannot buy what's about to come your way with the monies that are available. It just ain't happening like that. You hold on to it with everything you've got. You don't treat it um, and just flippantly toss it from side to side or put it in a back pocket and forget about it. I'm talking you hold it front and center in your life, in your heart, in your mind, as you wake, as you sleep, every day, all day. Why? Because it is that priceless, and you better have it to do what God has called you to do. Does that make sense? Man, let me show you what happens. In the beginning was the word... And the word was with God. This is John 1. And the word was God. Like not only he's speaking, but he was God. And he was with God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things are made. Let there be light. Boom. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and the light, that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There is hope for you. All you need is the word. Ah. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the, though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Like, mm. 
The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning Him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because He was before me. Out of His fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. And just like Isaiah said, when I speak, my word does not come back to me void. Listen to me. Jesus didn't return back to the Father void. He accomplished exactly what he was sent to accomplish. He hung on a cross and he shed his blood for what? That we might have redemption, that we might have a, a sacrifice in our stead, that we might find atonement for our sins. He did not return void, but victoriously. He accomplished everything that God sent him to be um, accomplishing. He gave us a way back home. He made a way for us. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him, but you can come through him because he did not return void. He returned victoriously. You better know that what you've been given he is a priceless gift. He is the golden ticket. And he gets you through. He gets you um, life. And he gives you a new perspective on everything because he has accomplished what he was sent to accomplish. Don't you treat cheap this Jesus. Listen to me. Don't treat his grace that he extends to us cheap. You thinking you got nothing? I'm telling you, you got everything. You have the ticket of life. All power. Nothing is made apart from him. He is the one that when he speaks, worlds come into existence. And it's yours. You can't buy him, but you can receive him through faith. Like this is the gift that we've been given. Priceless. Hold on to him. Keep him ever present. Keep him um, in your heart. Keep him in your mind. Keep him as your best friend. Don't you let him go like he's worthless. But hold on to him like the priceless Savior that he is. Feel me? Now, watch this. I'm telling you that you got Jesus. You got everything. Like he is the word in flesh, right? He came and hung for us. But just because you have him, it ain't going to make life easy. This ain't heaven. This is the vineyard. This is where we work. This is where we toil. This is where we fight. Even though you got the golden ticket, you're still going to have to put foot to faith and walk it out a little bit. It's still going to hurt just a little bit trying to get what God has got for you. Let me explain to you because you know that story I told you trying to get out of Amsterdam to New York and it looked like um, everything just turned to uh, rainbows and cotton candy for us because we got that golden ticket? Listen to me. We left one hell for another because when we got to New York, we come into the same scenario. Ice storm shut down the whole place again. We flew out of one straight into the other, and all of a sudden we back at square one just like we were. And we fly into LaGuardia, and the place is just jam packed. Everyone trying to make connections, everyone else. I'm talking, my wife got cussed out by some New Yorkers. Why? Because there was a line that wrapped around a corner, and she didn't see the corner making the break. So she just stepped in line, and someone just chewed her up one way down the other. Welcome to New York, you know what I'm saying? But I'm at the ticket counter. Here's where it gets good. Here's where it gets beautiful, right? I find my way to the ticket counter. And I said, I'm trying to get on an earlier flight. Like, it's, it's not even midnight yet, and we don't leave till 7 a.m., and we in mass chaos, right? I said, is there anything leaving soon? And the, the, the attendant goes, listen, sir, you got the golden ticket. Use those words. You got the golden ticket. This is what everyone here is trying to get. You already got it. Don't you let this go. It don't get better than this. They can't buy this right now. You hold on to this. Why? Because the woman back in Amsterdam, like literally, she just didn't get a stateside. It wasn't just a ticket to New York. It was a ticket all the way back home. She changed carriers on us, cost them money, took us from who we were flying, rerouted us to another carrier, and took us all the way back to Louisville, Kentucky. Crazy. It don't happen. Ain't nobody eat a, a mistake like that. You know what I'm saying? But this woman did it for us. We had, I'm talking the gold. Take it. And I said, oh, don't change it up because you can't change it up. This is your passage all the way through. And that's what I want to encourage you with. Listen to me. You think that you got less because you only got the Son of God. He ain't just getting you 
heaven side. He taking you all the way to the Father's table. You going home, son. You were eating well, daughter. Why? Because there is a seat reserved just for you, and he taking you all the way through. I don't care how hard it gets. Put foot to faith and get your butt home because the ticket is for the whole duration, the whole extent of the journey, not just part of it. Don't you let fear think it's going to be something different than what it is. God has booked passage all the way through the end through the blood of his son. You got it. Use it. Ah, and get ready for the fight of your life because it don't get easier. It just gets a little bit more tricky every day you walk. Watch what I'm talking about. I leave this man's ticket counter, right? I got the golden ticket in my hand. But I told you we flew into LaGuardia. That ain't where our next flight out is because she changed carriers on us. We got to get to Newark. You know, a little bit of ways away. And it's getting late at night. I ain't never been to New York in my life. So I'm like, listen, how do I get over to Newark from LaGuardia? But like, you can take a taxi, but they jam packed right now. You can take the subway, and I'm thinking, subway at midnight in New York? Like, we got backpacks, we got a couple bags. I'm talking like, we looking like prime targets for a mug. And you know what I'm saying? He's like, or you can take a bus. We got a shuttle. It don't go all the way, but they meet in the middle, and you can jump buses there. I'm like, done. Done. That's it. That's the one we're doing. Baby, let's get our bags, go over here, and listen to me. I don't know your name. It's been like a decade since this happened. But homeboy that was working the, the, the bus routes, dude, you have no idea. I'm so glad you were about your business that night because that transition, um, man, just thank you for it. It just, I will never forget it. And I appreciate what you did putting us on the right bus. But now the instructions were just a little bit sketchy. I ain't going to lie to you about that because, listen to me, they put us on the bus at LaGuardia, right? We go through, I see Times Square, hey, bonus in that. But remember, snowstorm, right? It's freezing cold outside, snow everywhere. And we're supposed to change buses in downtown New York. It is now 1 in the morning. Like, I don't even know what stop we're supposed to get off at. The guy that put us on the bus says, this man right here will tell you when to get off the bus. So we go like one stop. There goes two stops. There goes three stops. All of a sudden, the guy's like, hey, this is your stop. Hop off here. I'm like, yeah, but where the other bus at? Oh, it'll come. It'll come. You just wait here. It'll come. Oh my, are you out your mind? It's 1 a.m. New York City, straight up downtown, dark as can be. Like, I'm looking, got a cute little woman with me and nothing but bags. We looking like tourists from out of state. Like, we're about to get shot, something. He's like, this is it, man. If you want to get make New York, this is your stop. Man, you talk about putting a heart in a throat. That's it. We step off the bus, and for a second, we stand on the sidewalk. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. This is a little too easy of a mark for someone. So we step back in the shadows in like a little recess of a building. And we're just waiting there. I'm just looking down, looking both ways. Ain't no bus coming. It's like 5, 10, 15 minutes in. I'm like, no, it's too cold for this. And then down the way, I catch sight, covered in snow. This huge bus, right? It ain't even running. It's just parked there. I'm like, babe, that's got to be it. There ain't nothing coming. Like, we at least got to go knock on a window, right? See what's what. So we got our bags, and we're just rolling them over there. And I knock on the window. All of a sudden, the door pops open. Homeboy is sleeping on the steering wheel. What you want? I'm like, you going to Newark? He's like, yeah, get in. It's cold outside. What you doing? I'm like, what? What are you doing? Run this thing. So we jump back on this bus, and we get to Newark. A little after 1 in the morning. I'm just going to call it 1.30. I don't know. It's been a while. And we find where we're supposed to be for our connecting flight. Terminal's dead. Ain't nobody there. But I know what's coming because it's all over there. LaGuardia. I know they all coming this way. So I'm like, okay, I'm standing right here. Listen, we got the golden ticket. Should it be this hard? No, it shouldn't be this hard, but it is this hard. So get over it, deal with it, and man up. You know what I'm talking about? You got the golden ticket to heaven. It shouldn't be this hard, but it is this hard. Do what you got to do to get there. That's all I'm saying to you tonight. I stand in line. Ain't a line when I start standing, right? I boom. Plant myself. Why? Because I can't not be first. Our connection leaves soon. Ticket counter opens at 7. Soon thereafter is where we got to be on the plane. I can't be 143rd in line. I got to be first. So a little after 1 in the morning, it's called 1.30, I stand in line. That's it. Ticket counter will open to 7. We stood there. What is that? 5, 6, something else. Wife over there tucked away. I'm holding spots for both of us. 
couple hours into it, here comes one. Here comes two. Here comes three. And we chopping it up. And there's a New Yorker. I mean, she getting with it. She is hilarious. I'm talking bona fide New Yorker talking. Ah, it's so good. Help the pa- uh, time go. But by the end of the thing, by 7 a.m. when the counter was going to open, you couldn't see the end of the line. It was wrapped around. That's why we stood. I'm talking no sleep for the whole night. Golden ticket in hand. And we had to travel through New York, um, <laughs> risk getting mugged, catch another thing to New York, uh, to Newark Airport, stand in line, no sleep, no food, no nothing for six hours. And all of a sudden, you're like, but should it be this hard? I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how hard it is. You got the ticket. You got to use it. You got to do what you got to do to use it. That's what I'm trying to get through to you. It ain't supposed to be easy. You ain't supposed to get to heaven a knight in shiny armor. You better have some bumps and bruises along the way because this path that we travel, it ain't easy. You're going to get in fights. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to have some sketchy moments. But daggone it, he getting you through. And when I got up to that ticket counter, the ticket did the rest. I did my part. It did his part. And that's what we got to do with our God. We do our part. He does his part. Our faith will work if we work our faith. What I'm talking about. Dare stand up one more time and work that faith of yours. Dare stand up and do your part that your God might do your, his part. He's already did the hard part. He hung on the cross, what we couldn't do for ourselves. Now he asks you to put a little blood, sweat, and equity into it. Do your part. Stand in line. You got to stand in line. Take a sketchy moment if you've got to, but do what you, you're, what you are capable of doing that he might do what only he is capable of doing. Get you on home. Right? Now, it sounds good, but how you do it? You know what I'm talking about? Like, this sounds good, but how do you do your part? Well, for me, in this scenario that we've been talking about, I had to hand my ticket over. I had to use it, right? And the same is true for us and God. Flip the Proverbs with me. Look at this. 18 and 21, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Power of life and death. What you speak in, what God has spoken. Those promises that he has given you, you speak them and use them like you would a ticket. Case in point, Jesus comes to give you forgiveness of your sins, to give you full salvation, to give you a way home, to make a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. But all of a sudden, you get a little bit challenged. A doubt comes in, a devil whispers, a friend comes by and says, what happened to you? You get all holy or something? Oh, I remember what you used to be like. You ain't so good. And there's that challenge, right? But you've been given a priceless gift by the word of God. You are a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. Where a sinner once was, a saint now stands. And you speak it, right? I used to be a slave to sin. Now I'm a son of God. You speak it. You use the ticket. You repeat the promise. You were made in his image. You get the right to speak. I don't know of another creation that gets to speak God's word like us. We are the one that he gives the promises to. We are the one that he spilled his blood for. And he has given us the authority to speak those promises, to use that ticket on our behalf to get us to where God has got for us to get. Ah, don't you let fear take this ticket. Don't you treat cheaply what God has labeled priceless. You hold on to it and you dare to use it. Like you meant to. Speak life, not death. To speak death, to agree with what comes against the promises of God is like throwing that ticket away. Think about it. I'd still be in Amsterdam. My wife would still be crying, right? Why? Because I tossed away something priceless. I didn't use it. And we do the very same thing when we let fear, when we let doubt, when we let temptation, when we let someone or something take away from us this powerful, all-powerful truth that God speaks into us. We have to wield it. We have to use it. We have to speak in agreement with it and do our part that God might come in and do his part. Speak. What's the scripture say? I believe. Therefore, I speak. I'm asking you what you believe. What you believe, because what you believe is what comes out your mouth. Listen to me. My God spoke to me. Surely you will summon nations you don't know, and nations you don't know will hasten to you. Why? For the glory of the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, he has endowed you with splendor. 
10 years can't erase that. I will not let time steal that from me. That's Isaiah 55, 5, baby. Like, that's the promises of my God. I will own that. I will speak that. When doubts come in in the middle of the night, when the devil comes whispering, when people speak against it, listen to me. I will use that ticket because that promise is priceless. I will not let it go cheaply. If they're going to take it from me, Bubba, they are going to be bloody when they get it. Why? Because that is my promise. You cannot have it. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but my God spoke it to give me life and life to the full, and I've been hanging on to it. I've been holding on to it. It is in my front and my center. It is always before me. When I wake up and when I lie down, what is the promises of God? And when God speaks, he brings into existence. It don't return to him void. He didn't do it with Jesus, and he won't do it with any other promise. It is good as gold. You can't buy it, but you can own it through faith. I choose to believe no matter what the circumstance looks like, no matter how bad the snowstorm is, no matter how many other people are around floundering, not knowing what direction to do, I stand and I stand differently. Why? Because I got the ticket. I got the word of God and I hold on to it and I dare use it to do what? To get to where he's got me. And that's what all of us are privileged to do. I'm not unique in this. God has given you a promise. I know he has. At a minimum, Jesus. But Jesus ain't the end. He is the beginning of this relationship. He is the gate. And we go through the gate to what? To go out and find pasture, to eat, to build up, to mature, to grow, to become those men and women of God that he has created us from the beginning to become. How do we do it? We feast on his word, because man can't live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. If we'll eat it, if we'll speak it, if we'll believe it, we will grow in it. We will see it. Let there be light. And we rise out of darkness one word at a time. I am not the man. If you knew me 20 years ago, I ain't that man. That man's gone. That man that lived in darkness that didn't even know what the light was. If you knew me then, you don't know me now. I am not that guy. I have stepped out of darkness one word at a time. Has he revealed this stuff to me? Which is why I'm daring to bring these things out and reveal them to you. Why? Because you ain't meant to live in darkness. He wants you to walk in the light of day. And he needs you to start making those steps towards it. And I'm telling you, it's going to be hard. The past 15 years, rough. You know, sugarcoating about it. We had some hard knocks doing this. We still got some hard knocks doing this. But listen to me. I would rather have hard knocks seeing than have comfort blind. You know what I'm saying? When you are meant to see eyes wide open, you are meant to hear fully. You are meant to live with him to the full. And it's time for you to start walking out one word at a time, never going back to where you used to be or what you used to do. Because that's a grave, and he's got life ahead for you. You ain't supposed to stay in Amsterdam. Get back to Louisville. <laughs> Don't stop in New York. Like, escape from you, New York, <laughs> especially this day and age. You know what I'm saying? Escape from New York and get all the way back, all the way to where God has taken you, where he has promised you. Don't fall short because he ain't returning void. Take it all the way. If you ain't seen the fullness of it, keep walking, keep believing, keep speaking, keep trusting. He is good to his word. His word is like silver refined seven times, it says. He cannot go back on it for his name's sake. Trust him. Believe him. And don't let no one steal this from you. And remember, your Savior lives. Let me end you with this. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. You're going to have to work, but you rest assured you're getting through. The ticket's your way home. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests, rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us, therefore, make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. 
but the word of God is living and active. We're talking Jesus first and foremost. He reigns. He still sits on high. He's still at the right hand, the power side of God the Father, and he is still issuing his royal decrees daily to those who are asking for them. Like dare to get a hold of one, and then you let him go to work, because don't you know when he speaks, that word goes to work for him, and it will not return void. So you hang on to that word. You believe that word, and you see your God at work in that word. If he says you saved, you saved. Don't you question it. Don't you doubt it. Don't you let another um, take it from you. You hold on to it, and I promise he'll do his part to get you home. It's by his grace that we are saved, nothing else. Not by works, lest no man can boast. It's all by him. It's by him giving us, like that woman did to me in Amsterdam, that ticket. I couldn't have bought it, but I gave her everything that I had that had my identity on. And that is what God is requiring of us. We have to give him everything that we have. And yes, it's scary. I understand that. But I've been there and I've done it. He returns to you so much more than you give him. A new identity filled with the ticket, filled with the power, filled with the love that he has been waiting to give you. Don't you understand? Out of everyone, he has been waiting to give it to you. All he needs for you is to hand over, to have the audacity, the courage to hand over all that you are. He might return to you something so much more, something so priceless that money can't buy it, but faith can receive it. You're going to have to trust him, though. And I understand you may not have seen him in the past. You may not be able to see how he could possibly do it now, but you know that you know that you know that this is your moment, that he is calling you to take this step. And I understand that it's scary, but it's time for you to let go and let God. It is time for him to do what only he can do, but he needs you to release everything to him. Hit the knees in the pen of the form. Repent of those sins and confess that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. The ticket will be given you and you will have not just stateside given you, but all the way back home, all the way back to where your rightful seat is. Not in a grave, but at his table, eating his food under his care, by his love. That is where you are meant to be. And if he has promised you that, you hang on to it. I don't care if sickness comes against you. I don't care if man comes against you. I don't care if trial or tribulation or nakedness or sword or danger or peril. I don't care if angel or demon or height or death. You understand what I'm talking about here? I don't care what comes against you because ain't nothing separates you from the love of God. He will always be at work for you. He will always be on your half. You've got a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Let him do his work as you dare to work alongside him. He has got you. You hold on to this ticket. You dare to believe. And after everything, believe. And you will make it because he will make it so. So if you need Jesus today, if you need that golden ticket and you know you're on the expressway to hell and you need to right that wrong, jump off and jump into him. His open arms are waiting for you. He died that you might have this life, that you might have this ride back to life. Dare to get your ticket and dare to make it home because he died to give it to you. In Jesus' name, I pray you do. And I pray you got a story of stories to tell someone else that they might jump trains with you, that they might find their rightful place and be sitting beside you and you get to chop it up about Jesus the rest of your life. Ah, I love this Savior of ours. Guys, take the step. It's one step at a time, one word at a time, but it gets lighter and lighter and lighter every day because you get to see more clearly as he speaks this word into you. He's a good God. May you follow him as such. Let me bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And may you take it from him fully, in Jesus' name. Ah, thank you so much for watching this video. I truly pray it blessed you. And if it did, subscribe to this channel that you might continue to get the latest revelations from God, that they might encourage and embolden you to walk boldly and faithfully with your Savior. God bless.